Awesome. Great, so welcome. I'm delighted to see so many of you here today virtually for the next in our series of professional development workshops put on by the graduate school as part of our first semester graduate experience, but open, of course, to all of our graduate students. Today's topic, a really important one that we're very excited to share with you all is focused on annual reviews and graduate programs. And those can look a number of different ways. We're gonna be talking about individualized development plans, annual reviews, and other documents that can help you make a plan on your way to academic and career success. Um, I am Shannon Connolly. I'm the Assistant Dean of the Graduate School, and I'm joined today by a number of colleagues. So I'll introduce to you in a moment. I wanna say just off as folks are still coming in, a few things about uh, Zoom etiquette. I wanted to mention, first of all, that we're recording today's session. So it'll be available to you later as a recording and to others who couldn't make it at this time today. Um, again, if you like, you're welcome to keep your cameras on for the duration of the session, but please do keep your microphones muted until we get to those question and answer and interactive portions of the presentation. If you don't have one handy right now, go ahead and grab a pen and paper or open up a Word document on your computer. We'll be asking you to do a little bit of free writing and thinking a little bit farther on in the workshop. And if you do not have your full name visible, if you'd please go ahead and do that, you can click on the more option if you hover over your name and rename yourself. So if you are just showing your initials or maybe a phone number, it would really help us out to mark attendance if you could put your, your first and last name. All right. So before I introduce my colleagues today, uh, we'd love to get a sense of who's in the room. We know who pre-registered, but we love to know who's actually here because that'll help us wrap our head around who we're talking to about these ideas of goal setting and individualized development planning. So I'm gonna launch a poll right now. This should pop up on your screen. And just go ahead and Select your school or college at UTEP. You should see all of them there in roughly alphabetical order. If you're in an interdisciplinary program, go ahead and select that one. Has that poll launched on your screen? Yeah. It did and then it went away from me. Ah. Let's relaunch. Same here. Okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right, looks like almost everybody has voted now. College of Science coming in strong. Looks like we've got the majority of attendees today from College of Science followed closely by engineering, liberal arts. We've also got some folks from School of Pharmacy and a few from interdisciplinary programs. So great. Welcome and we're so glad you're here. So now let me introduce my, my guest from the graduate school and our, our speaker, our presenter for the day. Um, you may see just above me on your screen. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague, Carla Hernandez, who is an undergraduate assistant with us in the graduate school and a junior majoring in economics. She's waving to you right now. Carla and I will be keeping an eye on the chat if you'd like to post questions, uh, whether privately or to the group throughout the workshop. I'm also joined by my colleague, Jesse Singleton, who maybe will give you a wave now. Jesse has just joined the graduate school and delighted to say today is his first day as our new assistant director for student support. So Jesse will be working on a number of professional development programming like this one um, in our first semester graduate experience going forward. And finally, last but not least, I wanna turn it over and introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Lucia Dura, who is the associate dean in the graduate school and a faculty member in the Department of English in the rhetoric program waving to you all now. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Dura to get us started and share this content with you all today. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope that you're doing well and taking care of yourselves during this high peak COVID season. Um, let me see, there we go. So 
The purpose of today's session is to help you understand what annual reviews are and the basics of why and how they're done. And you're going to practice writing long and short term goals. Some of them will be performance goals and others will be learning goals, depending on what your needs are. And, and we'll talk about the differences uh, between those. And you're going to do a little bit of work assessing if goals are smart and aligned. And all of this will make more, more and more sense as we progress um, with this. So there will be some interaction. So there's, there's a presentation aspect and then there's also gonna be some interaction. Um, so we'll start with the basics. What are annual reviews? Um, and you might have heard them called different things in different programs, okay? So annual reviews are a mechanism for documenting student progress and providing feedback. Basically, this should occur at least once a year, once per academic year, where um, you assess your standing, your academic standing, your performance, but also in light of certain goals, in light of what you want to achieve, what your career plans are. These annual reviews change across disciplines. A popular way of doing annual reviews or a more popular way of doing annual reviews, especially in the sciences, and I see the sciences are well represented today, are individual development plans. So there are a new way of doing this, but there are also probably more, you've heard the term IDP, um, IDP. So I might refer to these interchangeably. I might say IDP or I might say annual review. Just know I'm talking about the same thing. Um, what we're hoping is to, to get a sense of what you are currently doing with annual reviews, if at all, if you have them in place with your advisors or your programs, and to get a sense of any questions you might have right now. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna put you in groups and you're going to have five minutes um, two rounds of five minutes to discuss these questions. Does your, your program currently do annual reviews? How do they work? And what questions do you have? You may feel free to answer each other's questions or bring some of the questions into the larger group. So I think we can start with the breakout groups and this way you'll also get to know a few people. Yeah, and so I have you all set up right now. The co-hosts will stay in the room together, otherwise, I'm opening rooms. You'll see a pop-up on your screen inviting you to join a breakout room. Please go ahead and accept that and get talk. Oh no, it's good to see you here. <laughs> yes, likewise. Thank you for having this. All right. So I think Shall we back, Lucia. Do you think we have everybody? Okay. So we were gonna do two rounds of this, but I think um, our time is gonna be better spent actually just moving forward since we gave you a good amount of time to spend together. Can you into the chat, so I'm gonna put, um, if you could locate the chat, if you're not able to, what I did is I put it in the, in the shared screen so that you can see it if you're not able to participate. But here's my question. So does your program do annual reviews? Yes, no, just a quick type. Yes, 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 oh my gosh. Look at that. Yes, with capital letters. No. Okay. And if, if they don't, that's, that's okay. Hang on. Okay. Okay. All right. So no. And then what questions, let me type the, what questions came up in your, um, in your groups about annual reviews? Or what questions do you have? And you can put those in the chat as well. How long is the IDP good for? That's a good question. Hmm. I haven't experienced the process, okay. Do we take into account this year? Mm, I mean, so just to give you a little bit of background on this process, some programs may have been using it for years. 
um, other programs. I, and I would say every program has been doing some form of an annual review for years. It's just that it hasn't always been systematic in the same way. So um, if the program has been newer, for example, you may have experienced that you, you weren't involved in the annual review, but maybe faculty got together once a year and discussed the student roster and went through and made sure that everybody was on track. And it was more of an informal process. Um, what we're doing now is making it a formal process. And Dr. Kreitz, the Dean of the Graduate School and I have in the past academic year, so 2019, 2020, um, started going program by program, doing a presentation on annual reviews. What are they? Why are they important? Similar to what you're gonna see here today. So I'd like to, to share that with you. Um, and we'll, we'll take your questions into account as we continue uh, through this presentation here. So is that the right, let me, yeah, okay. So annual reviews, again, they are ways of touching base annually. So how, how long is the IDP good for? Technically about a year, if you're using an annual review process. Um, and so you want to be editing it at least once a year. Okay, and getting feedback at least once a year. Some people, some programs might decide to do it twice, twice a year, maybe at the end of every semester or at the beginning of every semester. Why are we doing this? Um, because annual reviews have been shown to increase productivity. And we saw this, especially with a group of postdocs that published more when they had annual reviews uh, than when they didn't, especially if those annual reviews included goal setting. And goal setting is also supposed to help you reduce stress. So I know for some of you, and especially during COVID, goal setting might uh, bring up the opposite feelings. It might, you might think, oh, I don't want to think about my goals. It's stressful to think about my goals. And that's, that's reasonable. But I would argue that that's precisely why we need to think about your goals, because uh, we need to think about them in a way that orients you uh, toward motivation, but with flexibility, with the ability to pivot, with the ability to, to be emergent and ready for change. The structure of an annual review can help anchor conversations with your mentor. So rather than you just showing up in their office and having a conversation that just goes into thin air, the annual review document, the, the, having something written down, can help you um, have those conversations in a different way. And um, uh, it could help your relationship with your mentor in some cases, especially if you're finding like it could be an icebreaker between you and your mentor. It can help them get to know you. And I'll show you why when I show you an example of an annual review. Um, and then the students perceive that when there are annual reviews in place that the program is better organized than if it didn't have an annual review in place. They perceive uh, more check-ins with their mentors or conversations, and this fosters uh, positive citizenship and, and satisfaction. Um, from a mentor perspective, what I find useful also is that it allows for troubleshooting or early interventions if you are going through some trouble or having uh, challenges in your life that we need to pay attention to sooner than later before an entire year goes by and we haven't noticed those challenges. Even though they require a time investment, in the end, the argument is that you're saving time because you're being more efficient with the way that you're working. So annual reviews at UTEP, there isn't a single way to do them as I think I've already said a few times, um, but every program is, is going to be doing them and they're required for you to get graduate school funding. So anytime you apply for a Dodson grant or a travel grant or any other type of fellowship opportunity through the graduate school, we're going to ask to see an annual review and it has to have not only your goals and your plan for the year, but also your mentor's feedback. Okay, so we wanna know that your mentor has seen it and has given you feedback. For years, annual reviews have been required by the UT system. 
But again, some programs have been doing them more formally and then others informally. So programs will decide how they shape annual reviews, the timing of them, and how often you would meet with a mentor to discuss them. But what we're, what we're promoting through the graduate school and, and to the programs, to the program directors, to your mentors, is that annual reviews that are effective include goal setting. And there's a couple of really important things about goals, goal setting. The first one is that these are your goals. This is your life, your career, your goals. And so even though technically you could write down goals that you think would appeal to your advisor and just get, let them hear what, they, what you think they wanna hear. Um, remember that this is, in order for, for this to really work and what I'm talking about with goal setting, uh, for it to be fit, effective, for it to really work, it, it has to be something that's close to your heart, something that you truly believe in. The other thing is that goals should be SMART. And here I lay out this acronym. They're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. It's not just, you know, you could have the goal to succeed, but for the purpose of this document, we wanna know how is it that you're going to succeed? By when, what does it look like? What does success really mean to you? Or what do you want to do in the next five or 10 years, where do you want to end up? Um, and that's, we'll talk more about this today. Let me, there it's, okay. So there's a lot of text on this slide, but if you, let's start here at the, at the top, and this is coming directly from the template that the graduate school uses for annual reviews. At the very top of our template, we have a prompt uh, asking you to discuss any challenges or successes that have influenced your progress since the last review meeting. So in the past year or in the past semester, what are some of the things that you have faced that have been positive or negative that have affected your, your work performance? So here we have some COVID related, right? Working from home and helping my two kids with virtual school has taken a toll on me. I feel exhausted much of the time and have lost some momentum on my thesis. Some of you will jump at the opportunity to include that kind of information. Others will not include it. You may go through it and you are gonna say, yes, I have all this stuff going on. I'm not gonna include it. So it's up to you what you disclose to your mentor. Um, Disclosing it can help your mentor better understand you, but you also know who your mentor is and you will know how receptive your, your mentor is to different kinds of information. We are encouraging mentors also to be open to this kind of communication um, because how you're doing at home often reflects into the workplace. So even if you want to maintain a professional profile, um, there might be some things that you want to disclose that will help your mentor understand you. It doesn't mean that your mentor is going to cut you slack or that things are going to be different, but just, just to make your mentor aware. And, and maybe you've done all of this, you've gone through all of these hardships and have been able to maintain a, an intact professional profile. Why not let your mentor know that, hey, what you see, there's a lot behind what you see. So again, though, your choice, what goes on here. Um, the other thing, there, there could be positive things, like I was able to get a fellowship, which allowed me to make progress on my dissertation. So, uh, or I got such and such award, or I'm not teaching this semester, a course release, whatever it is. And, and so again, it's up to you what you, what you include. That, that section, I would say, is more optional. And I have to tell you that, um, I am half administrator, half faculty. And so I'm not out of touch with the reality of filling one of these things out. In fact, I have 15 or so students that I've been piloting this particular format with. 
And the responses in all of the sections, not just the, the comment section, have been as varied as the students themselves. So um, what's very important though here is the career and long-term goals. And in most of my student um, feedback, I would get vague-ish goals. Like I want to get a, uh, I want to be a professor. Okay, so then my question to them in my feedback would be, what kind of professor do you want to be? So this is where we get into that SMART acronym, specific. So let's look at these examples. I plan to secure a tenure track position at an R1 university to start in the fall of 2021. Here we have a specific track. I want a tenure track position. I want it to be at a specific type of university and I want to start in the fall of 2021. That to me is objective. It's, I mean, it's measurable, it's specific. It's, let me bring up my smart cheat sheet here. It's attainable, hopefully, right? If the student is on track to graduate um, and it's definitely relevant. The next one is to obtain a teaching position at a four or two year college in the fall of 2022. So this is a student who is not ready to graduate in the coming year. So again, the, I'm, I'm trying to give you examples here that some of them are a little bit longer range and some of them are for somebody who's graduating this year. Um, my goal is to advance into a higher level position in educational administration with EPISD, El Paso Independent School District by 2023. So we know what they wanna do, what type of position it is, where they wanna do it and by when. Um, obtain a, a competitive postdoctoral position at a place like Duke, Stanford or Michigan State. So if, if this were the case, if somebody just said, I'm just gonna get a postdoc. So my question is anywhere, are you open to going anywhere? Because as a mentor, then I need to know that you're gonna cast a really wide net. Or you might say Duke, Stanford or Michigan State because they have the top programs in my field. And we can discuss um, you know, other alternative options if this were to not work out. But it's very clear to me, you want a postdoc and you want it to be at one of the most competitive institutions. And then as a mentor, I can then look at what you're doing semester by semester and see if we need to fill in any gaps or see if you're right on track, you're doing all of the things that you need to do. And then there's others that are more broad. I plan to start a, start a writing consulting business. Well, I asked that student, do you have, I would almost ask them for a business plan, all right? Like, who are you, who's your audience? Um, what? are you going to have people from El Paso or is this going to go, are you going to uh, cater to people in Texas or the region or where? So having an idea of, and, and this takes some of um, some imagination, right? Think of yourself. Where do you see yourself? Are there trees? You know, are there people around you? Um, are you working mostly from home? Are you working in a lab? Are you working in a city? Are you working in Taiwan? I'm looking at somebody that I know wants to go to Taiwan, but are you working, you know, what are your, really try to taste uh, what it feels like to be there. And then we look at, um, well, let me, let me jump into the next part in a minute, but so you're gonna have those top goals, career goals are your longer term goals. The short-term goals, we're not referring to weekly goals here. We're referring to semester or year, academic year goals. You might have different types of goals too, like finish a chapter, graduate, take a professional exam, those types of things. Those are called performance goals. The other type of goal that you might want to pay attention to is a learning goal, like work on my writing. Some of you have progress to make with your writing and you've been given feedback on your writing. Maybe consider what is that feedback? What is it telling you? Um, and what are things that you need to work on with your writing? 
Some of you might need to learn a language to proceed to the next step. Um, or you might need to get lab experience or work experience or an internship or something. What is gonna, what, what is not necessarily required of your degree, but is gonna help you learn a skill that will help you be more competitive. So in the next section of the IDP or the, the annual review, you would put in your short-term goals. And this is where you're seeing complete X dissertation chapter by a certain date. Back to the smart thing. So I don't just wanna know, you know, some people would put on their thing, like work on chapters three or one through five. And I'm as their advisor thinking, how feasible is it that you're gonna work on one through five? Let's look at how many months you have, or maybe you are. So my question to them would be, are you working on all of your chapters at the same time? Or would it make more sense to focus really on chapters two and three this semester, and then maybe on the other ones next semester? Um, so that's why the, the, the mentor feedback is so important because for you, you know, you'll, you'll do your best. You'll lay out what you think your short-term goals should be. Your mentor can help you fill in those gaps. But you can see in this chapter completion plan in the top box, it's very specific. Sent to my advisor by, Janu by December and to my committee by January. And there you're assuming that your advisor has time to read it in December and that your committee has time We'll, we'll be able to receive it in January. You may have to make some shifts there uh, and don't feel um, pressured if let's say that you didn't send it to your advisor by December, you sent it to your advisor in January. You can always go back later in where the, where the comments section is here. It says progress during prior period or feedback on progress. And one of these uh, rectangles you can fill in I was a month late or later, or I was a month early. Um, so those are, the first box contains what kinds of goals? Performance or learning? And you can dump them, in, dump your answers in the chat. And if I can find the chat, let's see. So put your, tell me what kinds of goals these are, performance or, or, or learning? Complete a chapter four, complete chapter five, performance. Performance, I guess, yes, you guessed correctly. Um, let's look at the next one. This semester I will work with a writing tutor once a week on three specific issues, topic development, propositions in English, punctuation in English. Performance or learning? Yeah, start, there's a stark contrast there, right? You're, you're not necessarily, nobody's going to, maybe, maybe your advisor tells you, you need to work on your writing. But if you break it down into a goal, you're actually doing something to make it tangible and achievable. Otherwise it just becomes, yeah, my advisor told me again, I have to work on my writing. Uh, I just don't even know where to start. You know, it's make it make it workable. And you can do three things in one semester, really focus on three things uh, that you want to improve. Um, and then the last thing I have in there is more professional development. Sometimes you don't think that you need to have professional development goals, but they're very much related to what you what you need to do. And so putting that in there will also give your advisor a bigger picture of what uh, uh, did this work, of what you're doing on the side in addition to all of the other things you're doing. Again, advisor feedback is really important on this. Ask questions. If they give you feedback that you don't understand or that you don't necessarily agree with, ask questions. What they really should be looking for is alignment between long and, and short term. Um, they are gonna know if you're aligned with program requirements and um, they're also gonna know more than most people if you're really preparing yourself for the job market that you're going out into. And that could be an academic or non-academic depending on, on your program. Hopefully they will give you positive feedback. We are telling them to. 
Feedback is hard. Sometimes I'm the first person sometimes to just go straight to the negative. And I have to remind myself to say something positive because there are positive things. It's just some of us have a negative bias. Um, and you can revisit these goals throughout the year. Even if you just have one annual meeting, you can still revisit them and, and talk to your advisor about editing them. So this is the workshop portion now of our, of our, uh, of our session today. I'd like to invite you to take five minutes to write or type a long-term goal. And here's something important with COVID especially, um, but even before COVID, this could also be a pivot goal. Like if plan A doesn't work, I will do plan B. So I wanna get a postdoc at one of three top universities in 2021. And you could have a pivot goal, which is um, I'm gonna put down three other universities or another tier of universities that show that I'm casting a wider net. Um, so try to think about alternatives if one plan doesn't work or if one plan, if, if COVID limits you to traveling or to moving, what would you do if you had to stay here? So aim as high as you need to, but think also about an alternative if something changes. And then write out some semester performance goals and some semester learning goals. As many as you can cram in in five minutes. My, my minimum specs for this exercise is write one long-term goal and one short-term goal that will help you achieve the long-term goal. Okay. And we'll let you know when uh, we're ready to put you in groups where you will talk to each other about how smart your goals are and you can consult with each other on your goals. So maybe um, you'll be able to ask for feedback on your goals. Maybe when you're done writing, you can either look up or you can give us a um, thumbs up or some kind of signal uh, as well that could help. And the prompt is also here in the chat, if anyone needs it. And, um, Focus on the, the smart aspect. So, and, and I'll put that in the chat here so that you have access to it. But how specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-based are the goals? So we'll put you in groups of three and you'll have a total of about 10 minutes to each go through your goal and get feedback from others on your goal. Okay, so just one more minute to group folks into threes. We have a little bit of an odd number. So one group will have, let's see, we might have one group that's not three, that's just two. But you'll see an invitation pop up on your screen shortly. Again, if you miss it, click on that more button at the bottom of the screen to see your breakout room invitation.
So does everybody have a goal, at least one goal that they feel comfortable with, or would you like to share anything that came up in these uh, peer work workshops? Um, feel free to type something into the chat or to turn on your microphone um, and we'd be happy to take any or any remaining comment or question. And I'll scroll up too to see if there are questions from the earlier part of the session that are still unanswered. Excellent. I know that some of you posted questions about the format of the IDP. And I'm wondering if those have been answered now, if you still have the same question, maybe again, feel free to turn on your mic, let us know or type in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lucia, do you see the question from Anna? She says for her group, it seems they're all on good track for each of our disciplines. So three different disciplines, very different, pharmacy, engineering, and history. Now we can give you a link to the IDP uh, document. And I think that would be helpful. I don't know if um, Shannon, you have it um, mm -hmm. handier than I do, or if I, I mean, I could just. Yeah, I'll go ahead and post it in the chat. So we'll definitely send you the link. This IDP document, you, you know, you feel free to use it, but also ask your mentor or advisors if uh, what format they prefer. They have a preferred format. Some programs have a very specific format. Some of them are just trying this out. And so you might be their um, motivation to try out a specific format. So uh, Dr. Connolly dropped it into the chat. And then I see more comments. We had pretty clear short-term goals like submitting articles for publication, start learning a language, finishing our prospectus. And then Dr. Connolly noted the, the two, we have two formats for the IDP, two templates. One of them is an annual template. So you would use, you would create a new document every year. And then the other template is multi-year and you would use the same document through the duration of your studies and just every year add um, new, new semester goals. You have the ability to edit your long-term goals. So if you know your first year you came in wanting to work in industry and then you decided halfway through that you want to teach at a community college, that's fair. You don't have to, um, it's, it's more about making sure that you, you and your advisor kind of have discussed your plans and your aspirations and are preparing accordingly. Uh, okay, here's a good comment here. We wanted to do with our long-term goals. So they had a good chat. And then I have long-term goals are more difficult to define. I'm barely starting the pharmacy program year one. Yes, that I, I can totally see that. Um, start to define it anyway, get a sense, practice defining it. What does it look like? Normally somebody who goes into the pharmacy program wants to do what, or, or what are some possible career options? And start thinking about them and seeing which one is a better fit. Again, you can change halfway through or you can change till the very end, you can change post-graduation. Can we have access to the workshop recording? Uh, yes, right. It might take a few days to upload, but you should have access. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll try to be pretty quick about it, uh, but we'll make that available to everyone who attended and actually who registered and wasn't able to attend today. It'll be on our website, and we'll send it to you via email along with the feedback survey. We'd love to have your comments and uh, help us improve our programming for the future. Do internships count as professional development? In some programs, internships are required. They're part of coursework. So they don't count as professional development. They're actually just, they count as requirements. But, um, but yes, generally anything that helps you improve your skills um, that is not required, that would make you stand out from other applicants would definitely be um, professional development. Okay, well, I've 
uh, on the screen is my, I'm pointing this way because my other screen is here, but on your screen and the shared screen, you should be able to see my email address. Um, I'm Associate Dean of the Graduate School and am always happy to take questions. Feel free to email me if any, any questions arise on the IDP. And um, I wish you a very nice wrap up to the semester. I know that we're not quite there yet, but we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, stay healthy, take good care of yourselves. And it's been lovely to have so many of you join today. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all take care. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. And thank you, Dr. Dora, for leading this workshop and sharing your experience. It's really wonderful to hear both sides. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you. for helping me set it up and the breakouts and everything. It would have looked very different if I had done the presentation and the breakout rooms and everything else. So the graduate school staff is phenomenal. Good. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Take good care. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, you.